Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing well today after yesterday's 1-0 loss away at Juventus. I think it's safe to say no one really expected it to go that way. I thought we'd see a bit of a bounce back, especially after the Man City loss. And what's crazy is after those two losses is panic stations. There seems to be, a, I'd say, a minority of some Chelsea fans, especially online, that are losing their heads like we're Arsenal or Spurs or we're about to get relegated. Like, chill. Chill. And I'll explain all of that towards the end of the video because I've got something to say. However, before we get into today's nitty gritty and all the news, I want to let you guys know, if you guys want 25% off any store rung attire, you can get that link in the description by using a discount code YTF25. Yes, YTF25 in checkout will enable you to get 25% off any store rung merchandise that you want to purchase. So head to the link in the description. Use the discount code, you're welcome. Now, let's get into today's nitty gritty. And it's involving Timo Werner. Timo Werner. Now, he didn't play yesterday. And that's the one thing I have on Thomas Tuchel yesterday is I reckon Tom, I reckon he should have brought on Timo Werner. When we had to take Havertz off, Ziesch off, when I suggested it should have been done, I think Timo Werner should have been one of those names that should have come on. And we didn't. We took Ziesch off, we left Havertz on. For me, still a mistake because Havertz was just all over the place. All over the place. Those two, as far as I'm concerned, had no place in the second half. And I think Werner would have actually contributed to helping to stretch that Juventus defence at least a little bit. Or to contribute something. He's a runner. Likes to move the ball. So I think that would have been a good solution. But we didn't go ahead with it. But Timo Werner's future is now up in the air. It's now up in the air. And it's come courtesy of Matt Law and the Telegraph. So without further ado, let's check out what has been said. Timo Werner will reassess Chelsea's future. If he cannot force way back into Thomas Tuchel's lineup, and there's the article all set saying expected striker Mary go round in the summer could provide Werner with a chance to return to Germany. Now there is a little, um, I'd say, well, not rumor, maybe a rumor that apparently he wants to, or there's a chance he might reunite with Julian Nagelsmann. It's a chart. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. However, do I see it happening? I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a chance. Because of course there is a chance. Especially if Timo Werner is not firing. But I think with Lukaku now, I think it's only right that we try to see more of Werner with Lukaku. I think that needs there needs to be some sort of something built around them. Something built around Werner and Lukaku utilising each other. Now... That does open up the question, how is it? How is that going to happen? How is Werner going to be used? Because when you're talking about a formation or a system, it means that Werner is going to be what? Alongside Lukaku? Or is he going to be sitting a little deeper? Is Lukaku going to be the lone striker? Is he taking a place for an attacking midfielder that we might as well have in the team? There's all of these doubts, right? But you've got to give things a chance. You've got to give things an opportunity. And I think so far, from what we've seen when Werner was alongside Lukaku, it's looked all right. It's looked all right. Now, obviously, there's a case here. There's a case to be made that Havertz needs to find form. Ziesch is running out of time, as far as I'm concerned, because Ziesch is in his prime. This is his prime. You're 28 years old. This is it. Your best is meant to be seen now. If we're not getting that, come January, we might have to start asking questions. We might have to. And not just that, Mason Mount, who was off form, he's going to come back. But I think that he's definitely going to find his place in the team. What about Pulisic? A fit Pulisic is what we need. But is he fit? Is he going to remain consistent? That is a question that needs to be answered. We need a fully fit Pulisic. And if we don't get a, food, a fully fit Pulisic by the end of this season, we might have to start asking questions about him too. Because we're just not getting any consistency with him. Three years he's been at Chelsea now. And it's nothing to do with him as a person or as a player. Injuries happen. It's one of those things where it's just really unfortunate. But the truth is, we can't carry passengers. We can't wait for something to happen. Like, we can't just say, okay, nice, but we'll just wait for Pulisic to get rid of these injuries and all of a sudden it'll be okay. Because for three years... It's just been inconsistency after inconsistency after inconsistency. And it's because of injury after injury after injury. This needs to end. This needs to end. So 
we got asked questions about Pulisic, but if he's fully fit, he has to be in the team. In terms of a playmaker, in terms of someone that can dribble, that can create, someone that can get into tight spaces, that can link up very quickly, that I would be willing to see Pulisic and Lukaku and how they would form together. That is something that we haven't seen yet. So there are questions as to how this attack is going to work. But it's definitely going to be around Lukaku. And Antonio Conte spoke yesterday after Juve beat Chelsea 1-0. And what he said was right. What he said was right. If you're not using Lukaku correctly, you're wasting your time. He needs to be used correctly. He needs to be used in a way with players around him that are knowing exactly what they need to do in order to execute the best for themselves and for Lukaku. And yesterday, we didn't have any of that. Why? Because we had both Ziyech and Kai Havertz completely out of it. So poor Lukaku was up top there by himself. And he can't do it all by himself. Should he come a bit deeper? Perhaps. For Inter Milan, he was doing that. You see for Inter Milan the amount of times that he would come really deep under Antonio Conte. He'd come really deep. He would drive from the halfway line and he would go with a Lautaro Martinez. Or he'd, he would be able to dribble past two or three players. Now, Italian defences like to play with a little bit of a high line from time to time. Not all the time, as Juventus proved yesterday. But for Inter Milan, there was times where Lukaku would find space and he would just bolt. And he would run and he would get in behind and he would score. We need to try and find how we can get those characteristics to work here in England, in the Premier League, when it gets tight, when it gets quicker, when it gets more cagey, when it gets more difficult. So it's dependent on the players around Lukaku. And yesterday, Havertz and Ziyech were out of it. Out of it. So if we have the right men around Lukaku, it would be good for Lukaku and it would be good for them. And I feel like Timo Werner could be that. I feel like he could be. I feel like he could be. So we'll wait and see what happens. But for this season, we definitely need to experiment and try and see what we can get going with Werner and with Lukaku alongside him. And see if Pulisic is going to be one of the main men in that front line. Is Mason Mount going to get involved? Is is, is Ziyech going to return to some sort of form? Because he has to. What about Kai Havertz? Because he needs to start impressing. I mean, yes, he's got time on his side, but... There's pressure. There's pressure. And if you're not playing well, you're not going to find your place in the team. And he was a big investment. So he needs to perform. He needs to perform. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. The other thing that I wanted to discuss based on yesterday's result was the overreaction. The overreaction. Was yesterday bad? Yes. Was the Man City game bad? Yes. Were they both bad for the same reasons? No. For different reasons, but the outcome was the same. And that is why even, you know, me, I've got a relatively calm head, I would like to think, in terms of the hindsight. But when I'm looking at this situation, those two games, different circumstances, same result. But is it something to get worried about? No. And that's why I'm going to talk about this point. No, I'm going to show you two little tweets here that I found that I for, from, from people that I know well and I'm, I'm in connection with. And um, I thought I'd share this with you just to give you guys perspective. Because this is important. After only two losses at the beginning of the season, I think it's important to share this. So this is from Con. Con CFC. Loads, I think a few of you know him. If you're on Twitter, you definitely know him. Took a few L's, but that's part of the game. In two call we trust absolutely and Dan McCarthy if you're doubting this man one word for you behave and it's true behave absolutely behave mate behave behave to doubt a Champions League winning manager who done it himself it wasn't like a Di Matteo this is different this is different. If anyone's going to even think about trying to bring up Di Matteo and say, oh, but when he was given a chance afterwards, it fell apart, right? Different circumstances here. In 2012, yes, Di Matteo was technically the manager, but the players won that Champions League. Let's have it right. It was Di Matteo basically undoing what AVB done and just giving that liberation to the players that, hey, you're not imprisoned. You're not caged up. You do you. And you will win the Champions League. And they went out and they're legends and they won the Champions League. It was their last opportunity to do it. Thomas Tuchel done it himself. Yes, with the lads. Absolutely. But he managed to get this team playing. He managed to turn it around with these players that looked, as far as I'm concerned, crap under Frank Lampard. Right? A few adjustments 
And boom, we've gone from 10th in the Premier League, an absolute joke, all of a sudden, European champions. That's not easy. With a young squad, with players that had just flourished through the academy, with new signings, it's not easy. Thomas Tuchel, in a matter of months, arrived in January or February. When was Lampard sacked? I forgot. But anyway, around there, three, four months later, European champions. That's Thomas Tuchel's doing. So to doubt the ability of this manager after two losses at the beginning of a season in separate competitions, relax, relax. The overreaction I've seen online from some people, it's not all, but from some people, and I don't, I don't even want to give it that much attention. This is the only time I'm going to speak about it because the best way, I think, to defeat those sort of, as, well, as, far, well, as far as I see it, trolls, um, is to not talk about it. Not feed it attention. Ignore it. Ignore it and just leave it, leave it on the back burner. But I felt like today, because there's a lot of activity, because I thought I'm going to give my perspective on it as well, I thought, let me address it. Let me address it for one time only. If you are one of those people that think uh, Thomas Tuchel um, has, is losing his grip, um, that we've been completely found out, we're not going to get any better, this is the crisis, relax. We lost to Manchester City, top, top team. We lost to Juventus, top, top team. Now, did they completely outplay us because of the way that they played? No. They outplayed us because of the way that we played. We inflicted the damage on ourselves. Against Man City, we were too defensive. We were too, I think, we were too narrow in terms of, in terms of thinking. We were too narrow-minded. And we didn't execute what we should have done and what we could have done. And Man City took advantage. Fair play. Against Juventus, we just had players that looked completely out of order. Two players in behind the striker that looked off. Havertz and Ziyech basically didn't show up. And that was key. That was key. Every time they got the ball, lose possession. Lose possession. Lose possession. Lose possession. How do you end up with 73% possession on the day and no shots on target? What does that tell you? It means you're keeping the ball, but you're not getting the man. You're not getting the man up top to get the ball, and you're definitely not allowing him to get any chances. That's what it tells you. It means you're wasting your time, right? You're not doing things right whatsoever. You're either losing the ball a lot, or you're passing along your back line for no reason. And yesterday was that we lost the ball so many times. Self-inflicted damage. Individualities let us down. It's not a cause for concern to start saying. We need to panic. The system has stopped working. Uh, blah, bloody hell. Um, you know, you, if you honestly, if you think that way, please reevaluate your thought process. Please put football on the back burner for a sec. Put it on the shelf. Go and reflect. Think about the way you see life, right? And then come back to the conversation because you need to give time to things. You do, regardless of what it is. Now, I'm not talking Arsenal sort of time. I'm talking. Time with standards, with an objective, with an outcome that you're aiming for. That is what you need to give time to. It's true when they say Rome wasn't built in a day. But the truth of the matter is, we are European champions. We have a top team. We have a system that works, right? And right now, we've just got players off form. Mason Mount was off form. He's now going to come back, hopefully, on form. Ziyech is looking all over the place. Havertz is looking all over the place. Alonso has dipped. I mean... These players, as long as they're in form, we're good. So wait for them to get in form. And hopefully, because it has to happen quickly, hopefully it happens on the weekend against Southampton where we pick up three points and then we go to an international break and we, for we can forget about what's happened. But we need to turn it around. We need to turn it around. Absolutely. Is the pressure on? Yes, of course it is. It always is at a, a top club like Chelsea Football Club. But to start calling for any sort of thing on Thomas Tuchel or the system or because of two losses against Man City and Juventus, not Burnley and Norwich... Right? If that was the case, okay, I'll be on your side here. But Man City and Juventus, and as I said, it was a case of us inflicting the damage on ourselves. As the tweets say, behave. Relax. Chill. Because hopefully after Southampton, once we win, and if we do win against Southampton, or if we come back after international break and we start hitting the ground running again, you've got to trust Thomas Tuchel. He knows exactly what he's doing. Let it play out. Let it play out. And if we rack up some wins, this will become an afterthought. So allow it to play out. 
But thankfully, we've got an international break coming up and we can, we can forget what's happened. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. What do you think about Timo Werner? Do you think he should move on in the summer? Do you think he will? Do you think he won't? Let me know what your thought process is around that. Around that. And let me know about Thomas Tuchel. Let me know about our two losses. And do you expect us to bounce back? How are you seeing the situation from your perspective? I'd love to hear it in the comments. Let me know. Thank you all so much. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit that notification bell to be notified once I uploaded i think i'm about to hit 90k i think that's happening today so i'll let you know tomorrow if it's definitely happened by then but uh again thank you all so so much to everyone that has subscribed we are on the road to 100k it's approaching very very soon so it's exciting i'm buzzing and it's all down to you guys so thank you all so so much it's been a long time coming but much appreciated when it all happens i will let you know and we'll have a celebration but thank you all so much hit the like button if you've enjoyed this and i will see you tomorrow for the preview to chelsea versus southampton where maybe a few tweaks are needed but we'll get into it then i'll see all of you tomorrow have a good one look after yourselves take care and peace